Welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today we've got a special guest. We've got Rev Racing, NASCAR Next, k and Pro Series East driver, Ryan Vargas from Concord, North Carolina. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm good, and I like all those labels you put there. That was, that, that was pretty cool. <laughs> well, there's a bunch more labels that I could put on there. So, you know what? 2018 has been an amazing year for you. So let's go back even to, you know, let's talk about January. January, they made the announcement that Ryan Vargas was going to be a D for D driver and was going to be going to Rev Racing to run in the k &N Series and the NASCAR All-American uh, late model series. So what was that phone conversation like or that when, once you got the word that you were that you were moving forward? Uh, it was big. Um, when I, I mean, I was excited when I just got the call that I was going to the combine last year. And then when I received the call, I was actually at school. I was on my lunch break. And um, I get a call saying from Daytona, Florida. And I'm like, uh oh, and I answer it. And, you know, I was I stepped away from my friends. and I said, hey, you know, you performed really well at the Combine. We, we would like to, you were very interested in having you race in the Canaan Pro Series full-time with Rev Racing. And right there on the spot, I cried because 2017 was a tough year. It was up and down. We spent a lot of time really having to redevelop everything that I had learned and relearn a lot of things because we spent so much time having to, you know, rebuild after some really big incidents and some stuff we couldn't really afford. So but we were able to come back from that and start winning races at the end of the year in 2017. And then I got that announcement piled on top of that. That was probably the biggest thing that ever happened. Well, and there was, there were literally hundreds, if not thousands of people that were applying to number one, just to be in the combine and then to get to go to it. And then, I mean, truthfully, Ryan, to dominate the combine the way that you did was, uh, was quite the remarkable thing as far as your part because you went down there and dominated that. Yeah, I mean, I, I like, I, I try to be humble. I mean, it was it was a really, really good showing at the Combine. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, that was really, really well showing and as well as you telling me how well it was. And, you know, I know that I went there and I just, I knew going in, you know, I, we couldn't afford to race 2018 and beyond back home at a full late model schedule. We couldn't afford to do that. And so I kind of knew that if I was going to go into this combine, I had to go into it knowing that it would be my career changer. And so I went in there with everything that I had, and it was probably the most passion I put into anything. And it's really cool to see, to have come out of that with this opportunity. So you get to the next big move, I should say, was the fact that you moved from California to mm -hmm. North Carolina, to the Concord area, I can remember watching your post kind of going through that you were saying goodbye to your favorite things. You know, you had to leave your dog. You, you basically moved and, you know, and left mom and dad. And I know your dad came out with you, but the funny one was that you went out and took a picture of In-N-Out Burger. I thought that was pretty cool. So what was that like to, to, to know that now, number one, your life has changed because of uh, the Drive for Diversity program? And now all of a sudden it's like, okay, I'm going to move completely across the country. I don't think from where you were to where you moved to is not much difference unless we scope something out from like a Hawaii up to Maine or something like that. So that was yeah. a long move. What was that like? It was, uh, it was, it was tough. It was tough, but in a good way, I guess you could say, because, um, I didn't realize how big of a deal it really was. Like, I mean, I knew it was a big deal. I knew it was big for my career, but I didn't realize how big of a deal it was for my friends and family because I spent a lot of time while I was still there uh, during Christmas and Thanksgiving, um, just spending time with family, spending time with friends. And it, I guess it really hit me when before we went on summer break at my high school and it was my last actual days in a regular high school before I went to online school. And, you know, I had a bunch of people, a bunch of friends that I've talked to my whole life and some that have, you know, kind of gone away that just kind of came up to me and said, hey, we're, we're so proud of you. We, you know, we wish you luck. And it was like people, like kids my age telling me this. And it was like, this is real. <laughs> like I'm going out and I'm, my whole life is changing in a few months and not even a few months, a few weeks. And it was neat to have all my friends and family come up to me and just say, you know, say all those nice things. And it kind of, that's when it really hit me, I guess you could say. So it was neat. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big, big move. So you would think that, 
you know, the D for D, the move to California, that was about all that could happen to you for, you know, this year. And then all of a sudden, to me, the big announcement that Ryan yeah. Vargas was selected as one of only nine people to the 2018 NASCAR Next class. And, uh, you know, for me, it was kind of very strenuous because I knew about this two and a half to three weeks before you did. And every time I was talking to you, I would be like, okay, let's just stay confident. I know you're in good place, man. I, I never thought I could keep a secret. You know, my idea of keeping a secret was to be the first one to tell it. And so what was that phone call like? Um, well, this is the second time I cried in this, in this interview. Um, I got the call. I was actually, the funny thing was I was on a run. I was running because our the Rev Racing Shop is like down the road from Charlotte Motor Speedway. So me and Nick often we we go for a run. We leave the Rev Shop and run all the way around Charlotte Motor Speedway, then back. But well, we were on the front stretch basically of Charlotte Motor Speedway, like right where the entrance is. And I get my get a call and it said like NASCAR offices or something like that. And I'm like, okay, hey Nick, we're, we gotta stop. <laughs> so I, I stop and I answer the call and they tell me, you know, we we're we're really interested. We're gonna have you part of the NASCAR Next class. And I just kind of had to take a sec because, A, I was out of breath, and B, you know, it was a big deal. I had to sit down, and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is big. Um, so that really changed the whole course of – I shouldn't say it changed the whole course because either way I was going to be doing what I'm doing now. But it just kind of um, – it exposed me to a, a much bigger um, range of fans in the NASCAR – in the NASCAR fan base because I was able to go to races. And, I mean, I think – Another part that really just kind of stood out to me was, you know, I went to Bristol. I went to the night race this year. And, you know, I didn't have any, you know, NASCAR next stuff on. Um, I was just kind of there as a fan. I had my Rev Racing polo and that was it. Um, and I was walking through the turn three gates where they have all the fans kind of lining up on the wall. And I heard a couple fans start screaming my name. And that was one of those moments where I was like, wow, this is real. Like, this is actually one of those things where, where it's actually a bigger deal than I even really thought of. Like, I knew it was one of the biggest things that happened to me, but having fans that are at a cup race recognize me and ask for my autograph, that was something that just was like, wow, this is actually happening. <laughs> so that was cool. And you got to do some really cool stuff as far as the NASCAR Next program is uh, concerned, and I know you went to some pretty um, exclusive parties, uh, I should say. I know that you made a trip out to uh, Lisa France Kennedy's house, and that had to be that had to be awesome. And then, you know, all of the media things that you guys did. You know, you're on NASCAR Race Hub. Uh, you're playing, you know, games with Larry McReynolds, and I mean, walk us through that a little bit. I know that it was a big deal for it to set in, but now all of a sudden you're into the flow and all of these things are happening very quickly. Well, I mean, I'm kind of known as the guy that when you get them to start talking, I, I can't shut up. So when the whole next deal was announced and that whole, the whole, I guess you could say media tour happened with the race hub and the photo shoots and the interviews and all that. I mean, I was just talking and talking. I was, cause I, I was just so excited. This was a really big deal to me. I mean, that whole day really just kind of blended together to me because I was so shocked. Like a lot of the racers that are also in NASCAR Next, I watched videos of them racing. Like I watched them, some of them on TV. Like I knew about Haley Deegan, you know, because she's Brian De she's Brian Deegan's daughter. And I grew up a Brian Deegan fan because I love freestyle motocross and all that stuff. So the same thing with like Tanner Thorson and all those guys. So it was, it was really cool to be able to kind of be put in that same group as them. And, you know, it's I guess you could say it's a little bit of added pressure, but in a good way. Yeah, because, you know, moving forward, I mean, you're always going to have that, I, I don't want to call it a brand, but that connection that you were a NASCAR Next Driver. And yeah. of the thousands and thousands that are out there trying to achieve that, they only chose nine, and you being a part of that, I mean, to me, that was a, that was a major announcement. I think that's something that's really going to help to advance your career. Um, so moving forward, we're thinking, okay, well, you know, that's pretty much it. We, we now got to get in and behind the race car and start to race, but that wasn't. I mean, I think recently you just announced that you have a hat deal. You want to talk a little bit about that? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there's like, I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes. Like, I mean, obviously racing is the big part of it and I've been working every week and week out to improve that, whether it be taking notes or going on iRacing. But besides that, I've been just trying to work on little deals and I have a hat right here, but I've been signed up with uh, Finlay Hats. They're an uh, up and coming brand from uh, Oregon. Um, they have really, really neat stuff and I'm really proud to kind of represent them. Um, we're going to have some merch coming out here very soon. Um, with my logo on it, and there's also going to be some really, uh, really cool little racing designs. It's a, it's a new market for Finlay, so it's, it's cool to see them jump in full bore like this. Okay, so again, we're not done. You know, <laughs> uh, now all of a sudden, I mean, you just talked about i racing, and we know that you're, you know, um, are, would you call yourself a gamer? Would you call yourself a big video game person? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of eye racing, to be very honest. Like, to me, I know I'm terrible at it. <laughs> um, I just have never been very good at eye racing. Um, if you take me to a track that I know of, like I did an eye racing race with Nick, who basically lives on eye racing, um, and I was running with him, and I was like, "Ha, ah, look at this!" But it was at Irwindale, of course. I'm gonna kind of do well at Irwindale. Um, but it's just such a weird feeling to me because for me, I'm not used to the having to feel while the car is with your hands. I'm used to feeling it. I'm a seat of the pants driver. I'm used to feeling the car kind of wash out or get tight. So it's a very unnatural feeling, but once I do it a whole lot, it gets more clear. But I'm used to playing NASCAR video games on my TV. So that's usually my cup of tea right there. So what's it going to be like when you turn that that NASCAR game on and it's uh, NASCAR heat and all of a sudden it's like, Oh my gosh, that's me. So it was again, just introduced that you're a part of the new release for NASCAR heat. So yes. I, to me, that would, that was a shocker for me even. I mean, I'm yeah. on the other end going and I always try to kind of be cool, but I can remember hanging the phone up. I'm like, that's bad. That is just yeah. awesome. Can you believe that? Yeah. Um, and me being a big, you know, console gamer, um, that's going to be really fun to go and turn on the game and, play as myself in a NASCAR video game. I mean, I it, it was really cool. I was watching, because last night I was all excited about it. I was checking that stuff out. And I was and I saw the video, it was like NASCAR Heat 3 crash compilation. And the first clip was a video and I ended up getting wrecked in the video. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in a crash video. <laughs> so it was uh, it was neat to see that. I, I, and, I, I'm, and I'm animated, the car is animated. And I guess, I guess my character guy is animated and everything, so. It's just cool to see my name in a video game and see myself in a video game. So that's really neat. And here's the good news. You, you might have crashed in the video game, but all you had to do is hit the reset button. There wasn't a check to write for crash bots after that was over. Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, I know that you do a lot with uh, the foundation um, about the surgery that you had when you were young. And I know that you've got some stuff going online with that right now. So share a little bit about that, because I know this is an amazing passion for you. And I see you, um, you know, actually interacting with a lot of younger kids that kind of went through the same thing that you did. So just kind of walk us through that. Yeah. Um, so I was born, for those who don't know, I was born with uh, craniosynostosis, where essentially um, the side of my head uh, was deformed and it was flat. So I had to have surgery on that. It was act, the technical term for mine was corneal synostosis. That was a specific type of corneal synostosis that I had. It's a big word and I don't expect anybody listening to remember it, but just bear with me. Um, so then I had to have surgery and they reshaped my skull and did stuff like that. Hence the big, the big scar right here. So that's, uh, goes all the way up and around. It actually goes all the way around my head. So it's a, it, it goes all the way around. It's a big scar. And, um, it's a really big deal. The craniosynostosis community is very big. Um, it's not incredibly rare. Um, and a lot of kids do are born with it. And, you know, a lot of kids, when they get that surgery and they grow up, they go through elementary school, middle school, even high school, facing, you know, challenges with it because, you know, it's, it's a scar. It's a big scar. And some people, you know, I have a big old lightning bolt going down the side of my head. Some kid, you know, some people like to, I like to see it that way, but some kids, they see it as something that's wrong with them, something that's, a flaw and that's kind of what my thing is it's just i don't want kids to think to see that i don't want kids to see it that way i don't want to see it as something that holds them back because for me when i look in the mirror in the morning and i see my scar it's the reason why i'm here it's the reason why i'm able to go out and race race cars because if i didn't have that my life would be really the polar opposite of what it is today 
And uh, I've actually partnered with, because September, this month, September, is actually Craniosynostosis Awareness Month. Um, I've partnered with them. I've partnered with uh, Cranio, Cranio Care Bears, uh, which is a nonprofit organization, um, to really, that really just raises, um, raises the funds for families who are going through the process of the surgery and really just pays for their stays or pays for food or even pays for their surgery a little bit. You know, it's, it's a big deal. It's a very costly time. Um, so to make any of that easier on them is a really big deal. Yeah, because I, I remember the first time that I met you, I was thinking like, that's a pretty cool haircut, man. He's got this lightning <laughs> bolt in the side of his head. And I know that a lot of people have actually thought that. So the mm -hmm. fact that you're now going back and helping people that you can really relate to because you and your family both went through that. <clears throat> so I want everybody to, to take a moment. We're going to display that donate button. Um, reach out. I don't care if it's $5, $10 or more. Every single penny helps. Uh, so just click the donate button um, underneath this, uh, this video. There'll be a link there for you to be able to do that online and go out and help help Ryan do this. So Ryan, you know, we've only got, how many races you got left with the K&N series this year? I want to say, is it two or three? Uh, with the K&N series, there's two. And with the late models, there's three because there's a twin night and then tomorrow, which is a 75 lapper. So right. that'll be fun. Now, I know there's something that a lot of people probably don't know that you go through every day. And that is that you're in the shop every single day and helping work on the cars and doing things like that. Um, what's that been like? Um, it's been really interesting. I mean, you know, I, I like to I like to talk about, you know, being at the shop because, you know, it's something that I take a lot of pride in. I've always taken pride in my equipment whenever I was racing late models back home. So having the opportunity to do that with my k and cars and my, the late model stock that I drive out here, um, it just makes me have a lot more pride in the equipment and have a lot more respect for the equipment. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm in the garage grinding away, putting everything together. Like that's not, I mean, I'm, that's what the crew's doing. I mean, if they need help, they, they, I tell them, ask, get me to help. I want to help. Like I'm not, I'm the, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I'm not incredibly knowledgeable on these race cars still. Like I still have a lot to learn, but that's why I'm in the garage. It's because I want to be in the garage. I want to be able to come in and say what I need to change on. And on the late model, I feel very confident in that, but I know on the Canaan car, there's still a lot more to learn. So Spending that time in the garage is what I feel is going to help me in that in that in that area. Well, let me ask you this question: Do you think that's helped you as far as when you're in the races to be able to give information back to the crew chief and to the car chief about what's going on with the car? I mean, that knowledge that you've kind of absorbed just from being around it this year, um, I would think, has to come into a, a positive play for you. Yeah, I mean, coming. Like when you come off the track and you know exactly what corner of the car needs help, like that's a big deal. Like at the Denny Hamlin showdown, I was able to make calls like we need, we need to take a, put a smaller bar in the front or do this to the right front and stuff like that. Like you, you need to be able to know that stuff. Um, I know that in the K&N car right now, I just still need a lot of work. I just tell them, you know, I'm loose here. I'm loose at this point. I'm something out of 10 loose here, but over here, I'm something out of 10 tight. So I need to be able to know that's what I'm trying to do is with the Canaan car, I address it as I'm learning. I'm here with an open mind. This is my first se first season in Canaan. Um, and these cars are a pol pol like pretty much a polar opposite from anything that I've driven before. Like I back home, I'm racing on a t on a, in a late model with a 604 crate built motor with an eight inch groove tire. Now you throw me in a Canaan car with an 11 inch slick tire with a lot more power and a lot more weight. So it's a definite learning curve for me. And this year has been, I'm not going to lie, it's been tough. I've, I've struggled a lot this year. We've had some good runs, but this year has been a pretty pretty big struggle. But I know that these next two races are races that I'm, I feel very calm for that. So I think we can go on some good runs. Well, and I, <clears throat> I wanted to allude to that a little bit because I think that people, you know, maybe some of the viewers think that, oh my gosh, well, he got this ride. He should go out there and he should be winning races. But you know what? It just doesn't happen. I don't care if you're in the K&N series, you're in the ARCA series, you're in the trucks, the Xfinity, the Cup. I mean, we look at we look at Chase Elliott, how long it took him to be able to win his first race. He's running for Hendricks. Everybody would think, oh my gosh, he's got everything he needs. But there is a massive, massive learning curve that happens for every driver. Alex Bowman is in that in that same position. And as, as things start to change, I mean, you're talking about coming from a late model to a K&N car. I'm looking at like Hendricks Motorsports and saying, 
man, they just made a little bit of difference in a chassis change and a body change. And here's Jimmy Johnson, you know, we only got yeah. one race before the playoff and he hasn't visited victory circle. So I hope that the fans and the viewers understand how difficult this is. I can't tell you how many times I've seen qualifying uh, for you this year where the top seven or eight cars are separated by two or three tenths of a second. I mean, think about that. If you're sitting there watching now, you don't understand what a tenth is. If you've got a little stopwatch on your phone, try to click it fast enough to capture two or three tenths and then try to figure out that you guys just went around a mile track or a mile and a quarter track and you were three tenths different. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, it's 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 very tight. The Canaan the Canaan East. I've I've pride that the Canaan East series is one of the more competitive NASCAR series in one of the lower levels. Um, I mean, every weekend you have to deal with the DGRs, the MDMs, and the Rev Racings, and everybody else. Um, so it's really neat to be able to kind of go out there and race with those big teams, and you know, go and go in there and just know that you know I have work to do, but I can compete. And it proved itself. It proved itself at New Hampshire. It proved itself at Iowa. New Hampshire was a big race for me. I, I, it was my first race where I really felt I was able to be comfortable in the race car and actually drive the car the way the Canaan car was meant to be designed. Granted, the finish didn't reflect our result, but I drove. I felt like I drove a much better race than I had the whole season. And then we went to Iowa. We were running third when I had a tailpipe come through the nose and out the hood. So uh, that was a that was not a fun one. I just remember hearing a bang and seeing something fly out the hood, and I'm like, oh lord. So when that happened, uh, I knew our day was kind of over, but every race has just been a big learning curve for me, especially when I go to all these tracks for the very first time. I mean, I could do as many laps on iRacing, I could do as many, take as many notes as I know, but it's, I mean, nothing's gonna truly prepare you until once you strap in the car and actually go around the track for a few laps. So of all the tracks that you've been to this year, which one really excited you the most? And which one do you think that, you know, coming back next year to those tracks, are you gonna be like, this is one that I've got on my on my list because I think I really have a chance to go back and win at that track. Iowa, no doubt about it. Iowa Speedway was my favorite track this year. And it's not just because we ran good, but it was one it was probably the most fun I had behind the wheel this season. Um, I was able to run the low line, I was able to run the top line. I didn't get up to the fourth groove against the fence, but nobody was up there yet either. So I have that to back myself up. But it was a very fun race. I was able to make move my lines around, pass people, pull slide jobs, do everything I could to get through the field. And I remember I started the second segment of the race in 12th, 12th or 13th, and I ran and I hung out there for a few laps. And then I knew that our like we had a really good long run car, and we went all the way from there to fourth. So we passed almost 10, about eight, nine, 10 cars in that rate in that in that 50 lap segment. So. I feel very confident if we can go back to Iowa next year and possibly get a win. All right. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate you being with us uh, today on the show. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Um, I know that you've got some big races coming up. I think you're going. Have you been to Dover before? No, that one's going to be fun. Uh, I know the two team has done very well there with uh, Colin in the past. He won in his first year and then uh, he qualified on pole once or twice. So. The two cars always had speed there, so I feel like if I if I go in there with the right mindset and with the right knowledge, we can go there and do the same. Well, Ryan, again, thanks for being with us. Everybody go and make sure that you check out Ryan's website at ryanvargasracing.com. Uh, also go to his Facebook page, like his page, follow him. He's, he's unbelievable in the social media. Matter of fact, you've done a couple of things with NASCAR this year that they've asked you. So, just share with us real quick before we wind up what that was like. Yeah, um, I get a lot of positive feedback whenever I do the NASCAR takeovers, whether it be on their Snapchat or their Instagram. The Instagram was a really big one for me. That helped me out a lot with my social game. Um, but I like doing all those takeovers. Like I've done at least six, seven, eight takeovers this year with NASCAR. Um, and it's just, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Like I, I enjoy my my thing is is that like when I see when I see some drivers take over, to me I find myself tuned out because it's not as exciting. They don't give me the view like the they don't have fun with it. That's my that's my that's what my goal is every time I take over is that I want to have fun with it and I want each fan to know that the racing side behind the scenes it is still fun. And if you're not having fun, then why why are you still in it? And so if they if they are able to see that hey you know these drivers these 
media members, these officials, these driver, these camping work truck series, Xfinity series, cup drivers are having fun, are able to make jokes with each other and do all this crazy stuff. I, they, they relate to that. And I've had a lot of good uh, response when I, when I take over, like I did a Snapchat of Noah Grax and driving by in his truck and I had the gif of a dancing shark in the background. And that was like, oh my gosh, that's insane. Oh my gosh. And I was like, it's a simple joke. Like it's a simple joke. He's a shark head. So when you see that and you know, fans are like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. It, it means a lot when they can relate. So. Well, I think it's very cool that NASCAR asked you to do that. So you do a great job. Again, Ryan, thanks for being with us. Good luck the rest of the season. Um, I'm sure we're going to have you back on the show, you know, towards the end of the year or the off season. We'll kind of talk a little bit more about how the 2018 season wrapped up and what 2019 looks like. So again, I know you're running this weekend. Good luck there. And race fans, thanks for tuning in. And we'll be back with you in two weeks for another Race Face Spotlight show. Have a great evening.